my parents like to watch TV shows from China. It is because of this, they have purchased a satellite dish and a receiver just to be able to watch them in real time. But things have started to change. My mum asked me recently to find a solution to a satellite dish issue they're having. She wants to renovate the backyard area into a new garden. But we have a large satellite dish that is blocking the way. They have heard from their friends that they can buy one of these Android IPTV boxes that is preloaded with the Chinese TV channels. But those tend to be really expensive here. So I figured, why not try to build something myself? I had a spare Raspberry Pi 3 on hand and some time. Was it possible to do? As I found out, yes, it is possible to do. And in this video, I'll show you what I did. Before I continue on with the rest of the video, I just want to say thank you for watching. My name is Tak, and I make videos from time to time about things I find interesting in the world of anime or technology. Please remember to leave a like if you did watch through this whole video already and enjoyed it. And remember to click on the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload a video. I might as well plug in my other social accounts. I can be found on Twitter and on Twitch. I stream frequently on Twitch on most days of the week. And I hope you can join me there as well. Now, onto the rest of the video. Now you may think there are easier ways to accomplish this, and that is true. I've looked at putting Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi and leaving bookmarks in Firefox to various TV streaming websites, but that would have involved getting a keyboard and mouse, and training my parents on how to use it. Which, by the way, they will never remember because they are pretty much borderline scared of any kind of technology that's more advanced than a microwave oven. I have also tried using Kodi and found these Chinese TV plugins that were created many years ago. But that is where all the problems occur. These plugins are years old. When I installed them, none of them would work. Plus, I found out that the Kodi interface was a bit too complicated for them to use as well. So I finally settled on the following solution. Using a custom build of Android and using some apps that I can use to stream these channels. Is it the perfect solution? Absolutely not. And I will explain that at the end of the video. But first, here is what you need to get started. First, of course, you need a Raspberry Pi. I am using the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. You could use the Pi 4, the Pi 3 Model B, or the Pi 2, but your mileage may vary. My one is in this Nest Pi case due to an old project, but a case is not needed. Second, you will need the accessories for it to work. So, a power supply for the Pi, an HDMI cable, a USB keyboard and mouse, and a micro SD card. I'm using a 16 gig model, but you could use something smaller. 8GB should be the minimum though. Third, you need to download a special Android build for the Raspberry Pi. A developer named Kongiscan has already pre-made his image. Link to the website is in the description. I'll be using the latest version, Lineage OS 16 with Android 9. As this seems to be the only version that will work in my case. Download the image file and get yourself an image burning program such as Bellina Etcher as well to copy the image file to the SD card. Fourth, but optional, you may need a Bluetooth remote control. Of course, you can use a USB keyboard and mouse if you want to, but in my case, I needed to make this setup as very simple as possible for my parents. I'll be using this Amazon Fire TV remote control, which is just a standard Bluetooth remote controller, and can still be found on eBay for about 20 Australian dollars. If you can't get this, use any other Bluetooth remote device that you can find. The final things that you'll need are a working Wi-Fi connection or Ethernet connection for the Raspberry Pi to connect to the internet, a computer with an SD card slot or a USB SD card reader to burn the image onto the SD card. Now that we have all these items on hand, let's start on setting them up. First, download the Constant Kang Android file from their website. Open up the zip file and copy the image file inside to a location on the computer, such as the desktop. Next, connect the SD card to your computer and open up the program Bellina Etcher. Make sure that it is seeing the SD card that you have connected. Select the image file that we have extracted from earlier and click on the flash button. If any windows open up asking about inserting a USB device, click cancel or close those windows. Wait for the program to burn the image file to the SD card. Depending on the SD card reader or slot you're using, this could take a while. Once this is done, you can close off the Etcher program, but you will need to disconnect the SD card from the computer and connect it back so it will appear up in Windows Explorer. We will need to edit a file. Go inside the SD card's file list and look for a file called resolution.txt. You will need to edit this with the resolution of the screen that you are using. If you don't do this, then the Raspberry Pi display may look cut off at the edges or distorted. In my case, my parents' TV was a 1366 by 768 resolution. So that is what I will be typing in here. 
If you're not sure what the resolution is, try looking up your TV's model number on Google and see if there is any information on what it could be. Now that the image has been burned onto the SD card and the TV's resolution has been set up correctly, we can now disconnect the SD card from the computer, insert that into the Raspberry Pi, connect the Pi up to the TV, connect the USB keyboard and mouse, and power and turn it on. And if it's successful, you should see the Linux OS logo on screen. This first boot up process will take a few minutes. Once you see the setup screen, go through the setup process as instructed, but make sure that you do connect to a Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection. Once at the home screen, you will want to load up the browser app and search on Google for Shafa app. Click on the very first link and then click on the green button at the top. This will download an APK file to your Raspberry Pi, which is the installer for the first program that is needed. Open up the notifications panel by clicking at the top of the screen, and then click on the downloaded file. And if prompted that Android has blocked the installation from an unknown source, go into the settings and enable the option to install from the unknown source. Once that is done, go to the home screen and look for the newly installed Shafa app. Open this up, click on the search button and look for an app called HDP. This is the app you will need from here on out. Download it and let it install the HDP app. Again, if Android prompts that the installation is blocked due to an unknown source, enable it so you can continue. Now that HDP app is installed, well, congratulations, you have finished really. Opening up the HDP app will start streaming a variety of Chinese IPTV channels. There is a large variety from the national broadcaster down to regional channels. Clicking left or right will bring up the channel list. The orange spinning circle in the bottom right corner means that it is buffering in the stream. And within a few seconds, it should start playing. So we now have the app running and we know it can pick up streams. So now let's do some extra task. With the Bluetooth remote, go into settings, then connect the devices, pair a new device and then start the pairing process on your remote control. In this case with the Amazon remote, it is to hold down the home button until it appears on the list. Once it is paired, that is it. The remote can be used as usual to navigate the home screen and the HDP app. But I needed to make the system even easier for my parents to use. So I deleted all the home screen apps and left only the HDP app in the dock. This way, if my parents ever accidentally exits the app, they will only need to press the middle button to open it back up again. And that is it, that is how I got a Raspberry Pi to become a Chinese IPTV Android box. Since this is running Android, you can run any other apps you want, like YouTube or Kodi if you want to. However, keep in mind that the performance and experience may be less than desirable. Now, like I said earlier, is this the perfect solution? Absolutely not. And this is due to these reasons. One, the interface is really slow. This may be due to the Android build and the lack of performance power on the Raspberry Pi. So if you have people that are using this and they're really impatient, you will need to remind them that they will need to give it a bit of time in order for the channels to come on. Now, if you only watch one channel, then this may not be an issue. Two, the streams to some channels may not work at all. Since I believe that this app is not an official way to watch some of these streams, and it may be pulling them off of another system. In fact, when I was testing it, quite a fair amount of channels were not working at all. But again, if you only watch one channel and that one channel is always stable, and this may not be an issue at all. Three, in my experience, I could not get the power button script to work at all. Even though I followed the instructions, it just didn't work. However, since the Raspberry Pi consumes such little power, I figured just to leave it on at all times. It will save on the boot up times, which are quite long already. And four, finally, this is all dependent on not only just your internet connection, but if the streaming servers from China are congested, then expect a lot of buffering, expect some times or days where it may not even work at all. Overall, even with the negatives, this is a project that can be completed easily and quickly. Cost-wise, it is cheaper just to get the Pi and the accessories needed. This is compared to getting a dedicated IP TV Android box and definitely cheaper than getting a dedicated satellite dish and a receiver. If the HDP app does not work out for you, then there are plenty of other streaming apps that are in the Sharper app as well. So give those a try if you want to. Is there room for improvement? Of course there is. 
If you have found a better solution, please leave a comment down below to let me and others know. Regardless, I hope that this video has helped you in some way or form. Once again, please leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. Hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and please follow me on Twitter or join me on Twitch for my live streams. But that'll be it for today. Take care and thank you for watching.